Hey everyone, it's been a while. You may have seen Khaish in a previous video and she was quite small, now she is still small, a little bit bigger. And in today's video, we're gonna... <laughs> and, in today's, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at optional chaining. But first, let's take a quick look at how Khaish was doing with the snow here in Amsterdam. I prepared a small demo for optional chaining. We have this index.html file over here, which links, which imports this script. And then in the script that, uh, in the app.js, it's completely empty. And I've got an API, it's a static API, so we just can call it quickly. It returns some user details, like the ID, the first name, last name, age, and then some associations. For example, here, the parent of the user, their ID, we're just gonna assume there's only one parent always. Uh, or none, so either one or zero. And then referrals, which could uh, exist or not, but if it exists, it could be one or more referrals over here. And the goal of this is to fetch the data of the user and then and update the number of referrals and then put the parent ID if it exists. So with this demo, I'll be explaining optional chaining, but instead of just going directly into the theory, I'm gonna show you one example why we need it. So let's start by fetching the user. So I'm gonna fetch API users1.json. This is going to give us a generic response, a generic response, which we then convert to JSON. And then we get the data back from the API. So I'm just going to go ahead and console log it. If I reload, and if I reload, it doesn't work because I have a typo. Users1 should be user1.json. And now we've got uh, the user object over here. Great, so now let's get the parent ID. That's gonna be const parent ID equals data.parent.id. We can log that. Now go back over here. This is, the par this is the parent ID 132. And we can update the DOM, say document.query selector parent ID. This is this element over here. And that's gonna be dot text content. We update it with the parent ID. Let's take a look and see if this works. Yep, it does work. We get the parent ID, which is great. But this API is designed in a way that if the parent doesn't exist, then for example, if you take a look at another user, again, these examples are hard coded. Normally this would be user.json. And then depending on which ID you're fetching, you get different data. So I just have two files now to simulate two users. For example, this user doesn't have a parent in the system. So then the parent property doesn't exist at all. So if I go back over here and I switch this user to the JSON and reload the page, you see that it's gonna break with one of the most common errors in JavaScript, which is cannot read, cannot read property ID of undefined. This means that whatever we called before dot ID is returning undefined. Well, makes sense because the data in this example does not have a parent key. Well, this can be solved with code like this, parent ID equals undefined by default, but then if data.parent, then we will say the parent ID is equals to the data.parent ID. So in our case, it's just gonna remain undefined because this one returns falsy and now the code doesn't break. This is okay, but there's this new optional chaining that you can now use. And this allows us to always access parent ID, but we can say over here that data.parent may return a nullish value. And a nullish value is either null or undefined in JavaScript. And if data.parent returns a nullish value, so null or undefined, we're gonna short circuit this. We're not gonna continue running what's on the right of this operator. So this question mark dot operator, we will short circuit and then we will return undefined. This is why this code will not break for user two. So take a look, it doesn't break. The value that you'll get over here is gonna be undefined. That's because it's gonna short circuit because data.parent returns undefined. So this optional chaining will not proceed and try to read the next property. Now, when I mentioned the keyword nullish, I said null or undefined. This means that if user two had parent, 
and then null, you will still get the same result. Take a look. You will still get undefined over here. This is because the optional chaining operator will short circuit with an undefined, regardless if this was null or undefined. If it's null or undefined, so a nullish value in JavaScript, it's going to short circuit immediately and then you will get undefined. Now, if you go back to user one and reload the page, the previous code will continue working because the optional chaining will check this did not return a knowledge value. So I'm going to continue and proceed by accessing the ID property. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to sprinkle your code with a lot of if else statements trying to access something that might be undefined and then you have to guard it with an if statement. Now, there are some important things we need to mention over here is that data should exist. If you want to use optional chaining, then the main variable that you're using has to exist. So I cannot use optional chaining like this. I cannot say const, uh, for example, name equals a variable that does not exist. So let's say, yeah, non-existent <laughs> dot slash and then name. This won't work. We're going to get an error saying that non-existent is not defined. So for you to be able to use this optional chaining, this variable has to exist. So we would have to have something like non-existent equals uh, something, even though it's not an object over here that that works, but the variable exists. So that's something uh, important. Make sure you, uh, you always remember that this data has to be existing. Another thing that I want to mention over here is that if you know that data is going to be def if you know that data is definitely going to be in an object, then you don't have to use optional chaining over here because data is an object. So you will always be able to access dot parent on it. Even if dot parent is undefined, the worst thing that would happen is that data dot parent returns evaluates to undefined, which is okay. The problem happens when you try to access something on undefined, which is here dot ID. This is why optional chaining is required over here. So uh, you might see people using this, uh, it's not going to break your code, but it's not necessary. The only place where it would be necessary would be if data does exist, but is not an object, but this is often a code smell. It should always be an object. So, so in my opinion, you shouldn't have to have scenarios where you would need it over here. The reason why I'm recording video on optional chaining this week is because I was rewriting the curriculum for my JavaScript course, learnjavascript.online. And this week I was adding a chapter about optional chaining and knowledge coalescing as well, which I'm going to cover in the next video. So if you haven't checked it out before, take a look. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's an interactive platform where you read short lessons. You, you can take notes, which then show up over here. And uh, then you have to solve challenges. And then these challenges make sure that you are understanding the material. And it also comes with a flashcards app that you can open on your phone or in the browser. And then you can answer flashcard questions to, to help you and persist all this new knowledge that you've acquired. Going back to this example, and then let's go back to user two. It would have been nice that because we're getting back undefined to be able to say something like n dash n slash a, like non applicable. But for that, you will have to use you'll have to use the ternary operator, which is going to be quite a lot of code in this example. There is a better way, which is knowledge coalescing, and that's going to be covered in the next video. So in the next video, I'm going to explain knowledge coalescing and then come back to this example and then explain, explain to you how you can use it. So for now, it's okay. We're just going to keep it with undefined. And the next thing that I want to show you is how to access array items safely. So let's say we want to get the first referral. That's going to be first referral equals data dot referrals of zero. And then I can also console log this and then reload the page. Uh, yeah, again, let's start with the correct user, user one. We get the first referral over here. Let's say, for example, we want to get the ID. So that's going to be first referral.id. Reload the page, we get 159. That's correct. Now I need to make a change here in the HTML because this should not be number of referrals, should be first referral id and this would be a referral ID, referral id so let's copy this update it and then we can say document dot query selector referral id and then the text content equals first referral let's see if that works 
text content of null because this is gonna be oh because I use a referrer that's gonna be a referral okay reload the page we get the first referral ID that's great but now as you can imagine if we go to user 2 and then reload the page this is gonna break because we cannot read property 0 of undefined so we have a very similar use case over here where this returns undefined and then we try to access of zero on it. And, and you can also use optional chaining over here. Uh, the syntax might look weird at first, but it's the same thing. It's actually, it's a question mark and then dot, and then you keep the rest as is of zero. So let's take a look, reload, and now it works. I get undefined. And the reason why you do not have to put it over here in our example, because we are assuming that if we get an array item, then it will definitely have an ID. If in your case, you may have an array of zero, but then you may also not have an ID, then you need both of them. So make sure not to overuse the optional chaining and only use it where you think it's necessary. In our example, this will suffice. So question mark dot before the array allows you to access array items. Let's take a look with user one, and that's that's gonna continue working. All right, now let's go ahead and add a bio to certain user. I am the first user, and the second user will not have a bio. Now let's say we want to, and now let's say we wanna log this bio. So we say const bio, const bio equals document, because <laughs> data dot bio. And then we want to uppercase this bio, so we do bio dot to uppercase, then console log bio, reload the page, and then before we reload, let's go back to user one. We get the bio in uppercase, which is great. But what if data dot bio is undefined? So in the case for user two, yeah. So in this case, this might return undefined. So if we call the to uppercase on undefined, that's gonna break. Let's take a look. Yeah, indeed that's breaking. So so how do we solve this? How do we only call the to uppercase when data.bio does not return a knowledge value? You can also use optional chaining and the syntax is exactly the same. And now here you will get back undefined. It might be annoying that we're getting undefined instead of not applicable or another string, maybe an empty string, but that will be fixed in the next video with knowledge coalescing. It's important to understand optional chaining by itself. And then once you're ready, you can move on to the next video. Once it's live, you're going to find it somewhere here in the corner and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out my courses, they're linked below and I'll see you in the next one.